So Steve's car is a 1971 Plymouth Satellite, and here's what makes it great. This thing came from Chrysler with purple paint. But I'll tell you what it did not come with. What? A 383 Mopar, because this 383 Mopar was swapped into the car. It is not oh, really? original. Was it, this a small block car or something? It was a 318. Oh. So uh, our plan is the 383 Mopar will not fail us in the manner of the old 455, Buick 455, and Cadillac 500, right? No, the 383 never fails. Okay, so yeah. we need to make this run and drive. Why are you shutting it? Go get a battery and some gas and a plug wire. You're going to work on running. it here in the mud? Yes. Oh. Dude, we're going to drive this thing away where it sits. We're very flexible on Roadkill Garage. All we're really here to do is have fun with cars, and when one lets us down spectacularly, like the 500 Cadillac in the Gremlin, we just bounce right back. And in this case, we're bouncing to Steve's 71 satellite. Because look at it, aside from the massive dent, it's actually really good. And so we're gonna spend the next, like, oh, 25 minutes getting this running and driving, and I'm gonna say we're gonna pull it away from it right here, right now. That sounds I, like it wants to start. I hear valves opening and closing. Yeah. So something's going on. So we just established that the engine turns over. Now we're gonna figure out if we can make it have spark. Oh, these points are wasted. No way. Steve's old points were literally melted. This is supposed to be a contact block to rub on the cam, but it's melted. And up here, that's supposed to be an isolator. It's not isolating, it's junk. Now I've got the points theoretically functional, although the distributor is just rotating freely in the blocks. So the timing's gonna be way off. We'll still be able to see if we have spark. Oh, wow, look at this distributor cap. It's completely destroyed. You have another one right there. I know. But that means we have to reroute all the spark plug wires. One, eight, four, three, six, five. What we're doing is working with the firing order. We know the distributor rotates counterclockwise on this, so it needs to go around in a circle, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. And on the big block Chrysler, this bank is one, three, five, seven. Over there is two, four, six, eight. Okay, ready? There, okay! <laughs> it's just cranking so slowly. How's it ever gonna fire up? Can you pull up a spark plug wire and see if it's sending spark through the spark plug wires? Sure. That's a great spark. That's 100% solid. That's a pretty good spark. Right now we've confirmed spark out of the coil and all the way to the spark plugs. We got gas in the hole, but unfortunately it's not even like popping and sparking, backfiring, nothing. So the timing is probably really, really bad or the spark plugs are incredibly dead, which is what we're about to find out. Steve, you're gonna pull like number two, I guess? You think that's garbage? Look how rusty they are too. Yeah. We're just gonna have to pull all the plugs. Pretty sure that one wasn't firing. <laughs> well, Steve's got the new starter in there, so we're on our way to trying this out yet again. You won. Yeah. Okay. Throw some gas in there. I like splashing a little in the secondary, which will feed in there a little slowly. There we go. Let's see if it'll crank nice and speedy now. It fired right up. <laughs> I know. All right. It sounded like it was a little poppy through the intake valves, mm -hmm. which maybe just be because it hasn't run in probably how long? since the 80s. Probably. <laughs> that runs. Yeah. Wow. This is a factory Chrysler two-barrel intake manifold, as you can see by the two holes right there. And this is an old-school die-cast carburetor adapter to go from that two-barrel pattern, which you'll notice is screwed to the manifold, to a four-barrel. Now, if you're in the circumstance of considering to buy one of these, let me assure you, there is no performance advantage. The only reason you would do this is because you have a four-barrel and it's cheaper than buying a two-barrel to put on your two-barrel intake. That's old school and not good. So it turned out the 383 in the satellite is actually a two-barrel engine. Now the 383 was built as a two-barrel and a four-barrel. We have a four-barrel bolted to a two-barrel manifold with an adapter, and that is no good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this intake manifold, which is a factory cast iron four-barrel manifold that actually came off of David Freiberger's 71 Roadrunner. I'm using this carburetor. It's an 1850 series 
Truck Avenger. Now the Truck Avenger is made for off-road, but it'll work just fine on a muscle car. So I'm gonna clean all this stuff up and finish it by bolting it on. So what we're doing here is basically just trying to re-verify that the engine's gonna run okay. You saw it last night, we got it to just fire up with basically the carburetor not even functioning. Right now we're gonna throw on a known good carburetor and my old intake manifold and try and make this thing purr. on oil pressure. How come it's not getting oil pressure? How do you know? Didn't you hear the lifters? Oh yeah. yeah, I heard that, but I'm wondering maybe they might just be a little sticky. They could be, yeah. yeah. Do you want to like sea foam it or something like that? I was thinking ATF. We're talking about pouring in a little bit of automatic transmission fluid, which tends to have some cleansers in it that'll keep the lifters from clacking or at least break them loose if they're varnished or rusted up. Yeah and then change the oil and put actual oil in it. This thing runs like a top. It runs pretty good. There's no smoke in here either. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna fall in love with this engine. I think I already have. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we now have two quarts of automatic transmission fluid in the engine. <laughs> Who knows what the total engine oil level is at this point. Ready to fire it up again? Wow, it runs pretty good except for the lifter clatter. Dude, it runs great. Look at that. That's flawless. I know. It's a good 283 right there. The ATF is doing its work. Yeah. I'm super into having the car look its best, and I planned on stealing Freiburger's bitchin' center lines, but this takes an extra long shank and left-hand thread to work with our hub, so we can't even bolt that wheel on, which means we're gonna have mismatched tires and wheels, but it'll get us down the road, and we'll get to try the car out. Clear? Clear. Wow, Man, it looks more like a car already. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Ready? Yep. Shut it off. What did you do? Did you turn the fuel pump on? Yeah, you got sparks flying everywhere off your water pump pulley. It freaked me out at first, but now I kind of like it. Come have a look. Is something wrong? Yeah. Hear it? Oh. Oh, no. You better turn it off. Think so? Yeah. Oh, man. So what Steve thinks is happening is the bolts that go through the fan all the way into that flange on the water pump are sticking out the backside and hitting the water pump itself. And so he's gonna add a washer to them, which will fix it, which disappoints me greatly because I really like this. <laughs> this was one of the better things that's happened to us. Okay, trying again, hopefully with no sparks this time. No, it's still doing it. It's the pulleys hitting each other. All right, shut the hood and let's go. Yep. Back it on out. That's what victory looks like. Dude, it looks great. This thing is a luxury. Wow. Ugh. Ugh, it doesn't breathe good in here. No. <laughs> uh, smells bad. Yeah. Wow, this thing is smooth. It is, isn't it? See, this is the value in just taking garbage and making it run and drive. You look at it, you go, that car's junk. I gotta rebuild the whole thing from scratch. I gotta paint it, gotta get an interior, gotta rebuild a motor. No, you don't. No. You have to just cobble that garbage and drive it to find out if you like it. Oh, this thing is the cruise. Meat, what do you think of the car? Meat doesn't like it, it's a little too dirty for his standard might be. All your hood scoops flying off. Speedo works. Oh man, this thing's mint. I think you have to go 90 miles an hour for this thing to ship. You might. Okay. Woo! Woo -woo! That is steam from water getting into the crankcase or even into a cylinder. But you know what? It's good enough to drive back to Steve's house.
we got it running probably for one final time and then Steve took off. So I guess I'll walk home and get my own means of transportation that's way cooler than his clapped out purple satellite that uh, we probably should have never started working on on this episode. Didn't even leave me the dog.